Hey everybody, I'm Jim Classic, and you are watching Geekin' It, and for today's video, I would like to talk about the Transformers Rise of the Beasts Leader Class Scourge. Yes, that's right, Leader Class Scourge, from the Rise of the Beasts movie, uh, as of the time of this recording, the movie is not out yet, by the time this video is posted, I may have already seen the movie, but right now, we know little about Scourge, aside from what we've seen in the trailers. Anyway, I'm looking forward to opening this guy up, but first let's talk about the box, and then we will liberate him from the box. Here we have Leader Class Scourge still in the box. We have a No Windows box here, which I'm also not a huge fan of. Hasbro, please, please get your crap together. Let's have Windows back in our boxes, and let's have plastic to protect those figures, please. Either way. We have a closed box model, as I just said, but really cool rendering of our Rise of the Beast villain, Scourge. Now, uh, I have to say, this is <laughs> this is really cool. This is a really cool picture here. I mean, this guy, this guy looks nasty. I'm actually, I, again, I have not seen the movie yet. The movie might already be out. I might have already seen it by the time this video is done. But I have not yet seen it, but I am looking forward to seeing this guy in action. I'm hoping, I'm hoping he makes a good villain. He, he looks like, this dude looks like a monster. Anyway, here we have Scourge. It's Transformers Rise of the Beast Studio Series 101, Scourge. Here we have a new type of faction logo next to his name. He is part of the Terracons, a new faction. Uh, I guess neither aligned to Decepticon or Autobot, but probably more leaning towards Decepticon. Again, on the side, Studio Series 101, a nice, nice beauty shot of Scourge's lovely face. Gotta love it. Leader class. Moving on to the side. Uh, oh, this is a pretty cool picture. I like this. This is more of him just standing up. He kind of looks a little bit more commanding, a commanding presence instead of a savage killer. We have a cool rendering of his uh, blade. Moving on to the back, we see product shot of the robot mode. Product shot of the vehicle mode. Uh, I guess product shot of his weapon. And big screen inspired scale, detail, and backdrop. Rise of the Beasts, Scourge. Attack at the museum. So I guess this is, I guess that's gonna be the backdrop scene that he's got. Anyway, so we've talked about the packaging. Let's open this guy up and see what he is all about. Here is Scourge out of the package and standing in front of his cardboard display stand, which is supposed to be of the museum, which is going to be featured in the movie, I guess. Scourge has a really cool robot mode and is totally giving off this Mad Max slash Ring Wraith slash Fallen vibe to him. And yeah, I, I am totally all for this. If this guy really is a Herald of Unicron, as the trailers suggest, then he definitely looks the part. The plastic is cast in mostly unpainted charcoal color with some gray plastic thrown in there along with some clear orange plastic for the windows and some of the internal areas which in the right lighting looks like there's a fire brewing inside of them. This toy is one of those situations where minimal paint apps work well for it because he's kinda a dark knight type of character and the dark charcoal and just the brooding evil look, it just, it does work for him. He does have some silver highlight paint apps and some rust colors for the chains. Maybe some orange paint for some of the lights and some scuffed up paint on certain areas, but that's just about it. In this, this is a situation where minimal just worked best. The sculpting is really nice. The chains go all around Scourge's body and they appear to be even wrapping around some of the hollow bits of the toy. It's really a cool look, and it, it kind of gives that vibe that, you know, he is truly a, a, a servant of Unicron, that he is, you know, even though he's a big badass baddie, I guess for lack of a better word, he's also still chained down and restrained by a force more powerful than him. He's got this subtle sculpting under the chest grill of Autobot, Maximal, and Decepticon badges representing his kills. No Predacon badges, none that I found, Though, I believe in some of the movie renders we've seen of him, he's got at least one. This figure looks so cool. 
He's got this mix of both the busy details of a Bayformer and the more cohesive design elements of, well, just about any non-Bayformer, to be honest. He looks threatening, he looks mean, and he just looks fucking cool. I only have two issues with this figure, and the fact that the head pops off at the neck really, really easily because of the tiny ball joint, and you also have to lean Scourge forward just a little bit because he doesn't have the best heels, and he tends to fall over on his back due to some top heaviness. Since I mentioned the head, I really like it. That head sculpt with the silver paint on the mask and that long chain link type of neck that he's got going on really gives off the vibe that Scourge shouldn't be serving Unicron, he should be patrolling the Shire in search of Frodo in the One Ring. Articulation is as follows. Ball joint at the head and neck areas. It does like to fall off a lot. He can look up this far. He can look down this far. Up and down at the shoulder in two places. Bicep rotation. 90 degree bend at the elbow. Fingers can open and close. The sword is on a double hinge, so he can either wear it on his forearm or in his hand. Some articulation on the left arm until you get to his murder claw where all four digits can be splayed out, waist swivel, universal joint at the hip, and can kick up that high and go back that far. Has a 90 degree bend at the knee with a soft ratchet, ankle tilt, and feet can go up. Scourge's only accessory is his arm cannon. What you do is you take off the left arm at the elbow and then you peg on the gun. And that's just about it. It is five millimeter compatible, so that means you can put a blast effect on it, and it almost kind of resembles like a Mega Man Buster or something. Transformation really isn't that difficult to perform. It didn't take long for me to get the hang of it. I actually found it to be a little fun, and as far as Scourge's head is popping off as it likes to do, it did it during the transformation process. I would be a little bit cautious with the clear plastic on the roof of the truck, Considering clear plastic likes to break, um, you know, that's something to be aware of, but otherwise it was a pretty good transformation. Truck mode looks really good. This is where the Mad Max part really comes into play here, because this truck is dirty, it's gnarly, with the chains and the badges of the slain on the grill, the quadruple smokestacks. Even the weapon storage is pretty clever, though the truck bed is a bit of a mess, alas... Most Transformers truck beds tend to be that way anyway. Regardless, this figure is truly the antithesis of Optimus Prime, which maybe he is. I, I heard a fan rumor that considering Scourge is a servant of Unicron, and the name Scourge is usually either a Unicron Herald or an evil Optimus Prime clone, uh, that this guy might be the Optimus Prime from the Bayformers movies who either time-traveled into the past or hopped universes or something. And I, I actually would not mind this. Uh, I, I, will, I will find out soon enough once I see this movie. Anyway, this truck mode is badass. It is kind of like the Dark of the Moon Megatron, but on steroids. And it also rolls well, too. Rise of the Beast Scourge is a really fun toy. It's just a shame that fans can't get a lot of these toys out there in the wild and have to rely on Amazon or Hasbro Pulse to get their hands on some of them. I still haven't found an Optimus Primal toy in the wild yet either, and that's super frustrating for me, an adult. How bad is it for a kid who wants to enjoy these too? I mean, that's just not right. Anyway, I'm Jim Classic, you've been watching Geekin' It, and I will see you next time.